All right, so from this lesson, I'm going to dive into the code and then let's actually start to understand how the whole sample code works, right? So this is the code that you should have once you create a new Flutter project. So this code is provided by Flutter uh, framework itself. And you can see a lot of comments are already given and it's actually very good and helpful comments. Okay, I highly recommend you read all the comments, but I just want to highlight I, and uh, show you some of the key structures and components in this code because this is really the only code you have. This main.dart file is the only source code file you have for this whole app. You know, even though this app is really, really simple, but then uh, this code actually does show you um, the major component you will need to develop for the whole Flutter app. So it's actually a very concise code uh, if you you know, think about that there's only one file to support this whole app development and for this example, right? So in this main.dart file, let me walk through this one and identify some of these key components. All right, number one, this is the top part here in dart file where we import the packages, okay? Now, the import is something that I don't have to explain too much. In Java, you gotta import, you import java.long you know, some of the features, library, java.utility. And in Python, you do import from import, same thing. So Dart, you have the same thing, you do import and then encode, and don't forget you have a semicolon at the end. All right, so you are importing this Flutter material.dart, okay? So this one, the material stands for the material design, okay? So in Google, if you never heard about this one, if you search for material design, this is a kind of a design principles and patterns proposed by Google. And if you think about, uh, look at the Google's applications, a lot of Google's application does um, follow material design. So that's kind of a recommended design for uh, for Google's applications. That's why for Flutter, they also adapt the Flutter, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, material design in the app development, right? So they kind of told you what you should do for navigation, for layout, for different widgets, how that should look. Right? So that's why you actually import this one first. So most of the time, you will need to import the same um, package here material because a lot of these classes are based on material design, okay? So, but the, you might also need to import some other packages, some other files, so you put all of them at the top, all right? Now, second part here, uh, obviously, this is the main message, okay? This is a very simple, concise main message, all right? So we'll talk a little bit briefly about the Dart basics we're not going to talk about the whole Dart language, but we'll give you some basics later on. But here, understand this is the entrance of your app, okay? Because your app may have a lot of screens. Your app may have a lot of classes, okay? In this case, we already have three classes. Now, in Java, for example, you do a main function, public static void main function to specify where you want to run the app, how the app should be started. And then same thing here in Dart, we use that main method to specify the uh, entry point of your application. So that's how you can write a main and you run the app and then you're running this thing called a my app. And so that's the class right here. All right, so let's not talk too much detail about why we're using run the app. That's pretty much the uh, framework given by Flutter. That's what you're importing here. You, write, you, you call this function called run app that's gonna run that, okay? So again, don't dive too much deeper. Just know you know that this is kind of a framework um, Flutter is following and we will just be following the same thing. All right, so, but that's the entry point of your application because later on you will see you have more files and you might be wondering how this thing, whole thing has been started. So you should look for the main functionality, all right? Now let's follow the code path here, okay? The main app, so what is the main app? So main app is a class all right, and then this class extends a stylist widget. All right, so there's a parent class, and then obviously we are inheriting a lot of functionalities from the parent class right here. And um, so let's see what this application does, this app, uh, this class does, okay? This class has only one method, okay, right here. The method is called a build, and then this one overwrite the method from the parent, obviously, and then um, so, it, I kind of talk about this widget is the root of your application. All right, so that's why you actually start to run this application first, right? So this one can be used as a root of your application. So if you actually read this part here in the middle, let's actually see what it does, right? So it try to build something 
and then you have a context parameter. So again, some of these details, let's kind of ignore it, but then looks like this build method is something you have required to be uh, implementing for this app entrance. All right, so that's why you're overriding this one. And then what this one does is simply return something called material app. Okay, now I already explained that material design is the, the UI framework we're using and the material app basically this is the app that uses material design, right? And then inside this um, material app class definition, and you have some attributes. This is actually called a title. It's called a footer demo. All right, so that's probably the, the name of the app. There is a scene, okay, the scene data. Now, scene data inside, you can choose the primary swatch, and then that's the color using blue. You also have a virtual density, and that's how you can specify the density. All right, so obviously you can see now these two things does some of the specification for your application. Now this one gave the title of the app, and this one does some of the scene, right? Now to help you understand it, so for example, if we are doing the color, so looks like this is the main color for the app, right? So let's actually change the color to see how it works. So if I go to blue, all right, and I will see they're, they, they support all different kinds of color. I'm gonna do an orange. Okay, I'm trying to orange. And then if I try to run my app using the hot load button, all right, so this one go to, um, you know, change into the orange. I'm gonna change this to red and try this again. All right, this one go to red, right? And then you can change it to any kind of color. And I'm pretty sure you can also define and customize your own color with the color, color code. All right, so it's the green button. All right, so that's how you can actually modify some of the properties and then make some changes, right? But the thing I want to highlight here is this one is called a seam, all right? And if we're talking about a seam, normally this is the configuration, kind of a more kind of a global configuration. So uh, when we talk about the seam for application, right? So the same app should adapt the same seam, right? Same kind of color style. It's very Rarely you will find that app does use different, totally different color, different seam. That does not consistent, right? So you should use the same seam. And that's why you actually define some of these properties in the beginning of your application. And from here, you can actually tell this class here, my app, okay, also from the name, you can tell. Now, this is a kind of a really top level. That's why they call it a root of your application that specifies a lot of a high level information about the app, all right? So this class is not specifically for doing things for specific screen. For example, this text here we see here is not specified in this class. This class is only a kind of a global root level, high level configuration for the whole application, including the title, including some of the same properties. All right, so that's what you should know about this class here called my app. In other words, Every application, every app project should only have one of this class. Just have one because you only need to specify the same ones, title ones, all right? And then if you see some other properties, there is another thing called a home. Now this is also very important. So this is where your home screen is. So you start the app with all the same number and properties, but which page do we run first? So here it tells us that we're gonna run this my home page. All right, so what is my home page? If you scroll down, my home page is right here. It's another class, all right? So before we dive into here, now make sure that you know this class, my app, is the global application class that specify a lot of global data and information, all right? So uh, from, from this one, uh, if you ever want to change the style for the whole app, the theme, color, or some other properties, come here to make the changes. All right, and also from here, you can find out where you're gonna run your first page. What is the first page, right? So from here, that's how you can find it. All right, so with that, let's actually scroll down. Let's actually take a look at how we are doing this my home page, okay? So what is my home page? My home page is a class, another class. That's why in Flutter is object-oriented language. The Dart is object-oriented language, so everything is in class, right? So for this class, you actually have a class name, you extend stateful widget. As I explained, let's not worry about what is stateful, what is stateless, and it's a pretty important concept, but then you will understand it in another um, week or so. 
all right so this one does give you a lot of other good things about building a uh, a page so that's why you don't have to write too much code now in this class let's actually look at the code now this one is uh actually the constructor for the for the class because they have the same name let's follow the same rule as java or c plus plus you use the same name for the method that is a constructor all right so this constructor is a little bit complicated so we'll talk about this kind of a syntax a little bit later but basically it receives a title all right so that's why when you are running this my home page uh, class right here you are passing the title further demo page and that's where you can receive this title okay from the constructor and then you also have a class instant variable all right so that's where you can save the title it's a kind of class variable you can receive the value all right that's it and constructor and attribute you also have a method that you overwrite okay now this method they use a lambda expression it's a very concise one then you create a state all right so this is the method you're overriding so this one returns you a my home page state okay what is my home page state it's actually the class down here all right so you're creating a state you're trying to return this one and then you're basically just creating it all right so this line of code maybe looks a little bit strange to you but i will explain a little bit more about the dart syntax later on so that it will help you to understand this one better but for now you know that this method here simply create an instance of this my home page state class object all right that's it so but then if you look at this class right here this whole part here okay it does not really do too much things okay just receive the title and then create a state so that means that this one is the home page for the screen but most of the things are not really defined in this class actually it is defined in this state class all right so with that let's actually scroll down and then look at this class here so this is the my home page state class all right this one again it extends some of the state parent class all right so you will understand why we're doing this one later on once you understand what is the stateful widget for now don't worry about it and then inside this class you got a variable counter we kind of already seen this counter variable earlier that's how you specify how many times you have click on this button and then this is the method that increase the counter okay use something called a set state and not worry about a set state and it will just kind of increase the counter by one all right and I added a little output information statement here to uh, do the debug. All right. And then scroll down. Here is another build method. So for now, when you, whenever you see the build method, you should know this is something about the whole UI. All right. So this is where we specify how the UI should look like for this whole screen. All right. Because I already explained, okay, this is the class that take care of the home screen, which is my home page. So everything has been specified here. And then the UI part specifically is down here in this method called a build. We already actually seen that, right? So this one here, let's actually take a look at the code. Uh, that's where most of the code has been put in, okay? So we're returning something called scarfold, okay? This is another term here, okay? So what is scarfold? So you can actually Google that a little bit. All right, so if you Google for further scarfold, it's basically kind of a UI design um, guidance, a pattern. So this is Scarfold. Scarfold app in the UI, you can have a top bar here. You can have a body. You can also have some of the floating buttons like this one. Okay, so if you decide to use this kind of a style, then you can just use Scarfold. All right, so Scarfold is a very popular way in Flutter. So I would recommend in the beginning, you can always just use Scarfold to get things started. Okay, once you have a scarf, you can see you can specify an app bar. Okay, what is the app bar? Let's open the emulator. This is the app bar right here at the top. All right, so why it shows Flutter demo homepage because it actually used your title. Where did the title come from? So it says the widget.title, that means it's coming from your parent class right here. That's where the title comes from. So this title is being sent through here. Right, so if I ever change this Flutter demo homepage, I'm going to change this one to be uh, Flutter demo um, to homepage. Just add a number. I'm going to hot load this one here. All right, so this one has been updated because I'm changing the text. It's been passing to the title. The title will be used here in the app bar here. Okay, that's how you can do the app bar. 
right? So if one day you don't want app bar, okay, you can comment it out. I don't want app bar anymore, okay? And then I'm gonna refresh my page and you don't have the app bar anymore, right? So I'm gonna bring it back. So just so you know that this is the configuration that you can play around with it and then to do different things. Now, the most important part is body. Body is the whole content for the whole screen. And you can see here a lot of comments. Okay, let's, you can read the comments, but I will just explain this briefly. So they have this center thing to kind of center everything in the middle. And then you got this column. And then column is the way that you can organize and lay out your widget components. So for example, I can put them all this vertically one by one. This is one row, this is another row, this is another row. So how can I do this? I Because I use column, all right? And then here is specify how you want to align everything. So you align them you know, with a central line. Okay, that's why they're all centralized. And then inside this column, and I got one text, another text, and the third text. That's why you can see these three texts here. And I already showed you how to add the other one. I can add one more. So I can just add another one, just using the same style of text. Make sure you add a comma here to separate them because they're in a list and I can just type another text here. So I'm gonna show you, you know, this is the app logo right here. All right, so I can add a comma here and then rerun the app. And then you got another uh, text added. All right, so as you can see, now everything has been included under this children attribute. The children is a part of attribute of the column. So we'll talk more about the UI layout and how does that work um, a little bit later. But for now, I just want you to know what this code is, what's the structure, what each component does. Okay, so that's where you put all this concrete, you know, UI widget here. And then this one here has a text, this one a little bit special because it uses a variable counter. And then also has a style. Okay, style is where you can specify the style for the text, right? So this one, that's why this one is a little bit bigger, right? So if you don't do this one here, I'm gonna comment it out. I will refresh it and this number will become smaller than normal, right? So that's how you can do the style. So we'll talk about that in the future. So I'm gonna bring this back. This is the style you have here, a bigger font. And that's it, that's for the whole main screen. And then after that, you also have something called a floating action button. So this is also part of the scarf fold. If you use scarf fold, you can have this floating action button here, right? So you, you specify and create a new floating action button. And there's a few things. One is called unpress. This is the event listener. Whenever you press the button, we're gonna run this functionality here. This will increase the counter by one and do some of the things. And then you also have a tooltip. And tooltip show you some of the message. I think if you move your mouse here, if I hold it, let me try how we can bring it, okay? If I hold it, then you will see this little tooltip that I give you the explanation on what this button does. And you also have an icon here, okay? Icon right now is an ad. I think you can change to some other things. Flutter has a lot of defined, uh, so provided a lot of uh, icons. I can provide something called a share, for example. All right, if I refresh and rerun my app, and then you can see this icon changed. Okay, I can change it to something else. I can do a comment, all right, and then run this again, and then you've got a comment button right here, right? So that's the different things you can do and uh, pretty easy to change. So every time you make a change, just do the hollow, you can see the changes right away. All right, so to summarize guys, for this file, now you got um, four different things. A section for importing, a section for main method, a section for this root level app configuration with the same data, another section for your first home page. Now this first home page has two things has one class that doesn't do much things, has another state class that specifies most of the UI actions and all the details. Okay, so these are the four things you should actually understand from this sample code. This is very important because if you understand this one, we could actually start to extend the code and to make more and new screens and then start to do some of the simple things like navigation. All right.